Hello, everyone, and thank you very much for tuning in. Um, I am really delighted to be here to announce that the winner of the Fenton Gallery Contemporary Printmaking Prize 2023 is Amber Jessen. Um, Amber is currently studying uh, her MA in printmaking at the Royal College of Art uh, and is a worthy winner with her uh, photo gravure etching called Deep Within. Um, I'm going to be having a quick chat to Amber about the work uh, very shortly, um, but congratulations to her and that's a really fantastic um, winner for the for the prize. Um, I'd also just like to thank the judges so much for taking the time um, and energy and and coming with their enthusiasm to uh, to review all of the entries that were entered into the, all 600 of the entries into the printmaking prize 2023. Well, congratulations, Amber. You are the winner of the Fenditon yeah. Gallery Contemporary Printmaking Prize 2023. Um, how do you feel about that? Honestly, overwhelmed. Um, I was quite shocked when I got the phone call this morning. Uh, I think the first thing I said was, are you joking? So that <laughs> kind of <laughs> sums it up. But I feel really honoured. Um, and I just want to thank Fenditon, the judges, um, and everyone who's sort of been involved in the process because it really is just such a lovely feeling so yeah very oh well it's brilliant yeah and we're so thrilled um that that you are the winner um so let's talk a bit about the piece so it's called yeah. deep within which actually mm -hmm. uh, one of the judges even commented on the sort of um how that kind of evoked an intrigue in itself so um tell us you know a bit about the the series and and uh and the piece if you will yeah so the kind of work um all kind of originates from the background which is pinhole photography so a lot of my process involves working and making my own kind of cameras out of um things like matchboxes um pieces of wood that I've like reclaimed and I really like that kind of the basic fundamental nature of pinhole photography and how it's kind of taking photography to its purest form and I've been exploring a lot about sacred sites, places of Neolithic interest and the specific, specific location that that image was taken um, is in the Peak District and it's called, it's a stone circle called Dol Tor. Um, and me and my dad, we, we like to go on hikes and a lot of my practice is involved with walking. So I walk to these sacred sites with my camera and document the kind of process um, and the things that happen within those spaces. And a lot of that is internal healing, um, kind of the idea of walking and this connection that I have to the land, the camera and kind of myself. So there's a real kind of like synergy that I try and create with my work, which I really like. And I think within these spaces, because they're so important and they have been for thousands of years, there's something really nice about kind of bringing you and the camera back to that really basic level. Um, so, so yeah, so they were taken in the Peak District. So me and my dad, we we went on a hike, and it was um, it was in this field that it was really difficult to get to, and we were scaling walls. We were like. <laughs> we thought at some point that like a farmer was going to come and shout at us it was quite a <laughs> deal to get to but yeah. when we got there it was just absolutely magical um and yeah it just felt really really special um so the whole kind of series is based around this connection to to that and um these spaces where the kind of past present and future kind of blend together and there's almost like a timelessness that happens which is also something that kind of occurs within photography anyway um and the piece itself is a six color photopolymer etch so um I've like mixed the colors and done uh oh god alapupe is the technique <laughs> that's how I think that's how you pronounce it maybe not <laughs> that's all right it sounds about right <laughs> it sounds about right um and yeah, so I've like blended it out to really kind of, I really wanted to draw that attention to the energies and the kind of 
sacred ritualistic aspects of the stone circle itself um and it's interesting that you talk about the combination of kind of the past present and future in that you know there clearly are overlays and there clearly are mm. multiple exposures is that right that have kind of yeah. come to you know this sort of mix of horizons as well which the judges found so interesting like across mm. the sort of span of the image yeah and that kind of happens naturally within the, the camera itself um I'm quite I don't really like to use Photoshop or Lightroom I really like to keep the images as raw and as as um yeah just kind of as natural as possible um I find the analog process really therapeutic and there's something really nice about using something in a manual way uh such as pinhole photography and I think that multiple exposure really kind of brings those things together um so do you move the camera once you've placed it mm. do you move it then to continue the exposure within a yeah. different kind of um yeah scene exactly so I'll I'll kind of take one exposure um but what's quite funny is that with the cameras there's no sort of viewfinder so I really put a lot of trust and faith in the camera itself and it's quite a like beautiful relationship that we have that the camera needs me to expose it for it to function but I also have to trust in its ability yeah. to kind of take the image um so yeah I will take an exposure for a certain amount of time depending on the light and the light that day was just perfect uh so it really helped me out yeah. And, um and yeah and then I move and sort of position myself in different spaces where again I feel like quite a a draw from so yeah so there's, yeah, it's it's kind of your emotional response to a place as much as it is you sort of recording a response to it. And yeah. I think you get that from the piece. It it has this kind of slight ethereal sort of look, um, you know, that the pinhole camera or the effect of the pinhole camera draws you in. You know, you really are sort of drawn in, into this line of trees and, and beyond almost. So once you have exposed this and you've presumably walked back over all of these walls and got back yeah. to um <laughs> back to the royal college rock or wherever it is that you're processing your film what's what's the next stage for you and your work so yeah so i do all of my work at the royal college which is where i'm studying right now so i'm on a two years masters uh studying printmaking and i'm in my final term which is really exciting um so yeah i will take my film this particular film was 120, so like six by six, and I process it manually um, by hand at, at the college. And then from there, I will sort of take a series of digital scans just to see the kind of images that I've got and what I'm working with. And then it will be a selection process. Um, but again, I kind of, I don't move anything through Photoshop. The scan kind of comes out exactly how it shows on the film. And then from there, I will then take it to the etching plate um, and it will be again another manual process of like manually inking up the plate and then pressing it through the press um, which can take quite a long time especially because the plate is quite big so yeah. Um, yeah it was a really really enjoyable process I think from start to finish but it kind of happens over a series of days weeks um, so what's nice is there's kind of this sort of time frame that happens where I can see the kind of connection I had at the time, but then also reflecting back as I'm working on the plate is also really kind of healing and therapeutic in a way. Yeah, um, absolutely. So at each stage, I feel this really lovely connection to the work that then just sort of accumulates in the plane, at the image plane. And I, yeah, so... So just so just for those of us who haven't done um, photo etching before, mm. you have your negative or yeah. your um, your image. How is that translated to a printing plate? So the photo so the photopolymer plate is a light sensitive plate. Um, so very similar to the way a camera works, which is why I quite like using this process. Um, and you will get your negative, which usually is blown up via acetate. And you'll put the acetate, which is transparent, onto the polymer plate. 
that is then exposed through UV light. Um, and basically the light kind of hits through the places in which the light has hit will then kind of disintegrate. So you'll pop it into water and that will kind of take away the places where the light has hit. And the places where the light hasn't hit or maybe it's the other way around sorry um <laughs> that's all right <laughs> either way one of them um so it kind of creates these little dots uh, all over the over the plate at this point so you have raised surfaces and surfaces that that are lower down and then when you ink it up the ink kind of gets filled into these gaps and then that's kind of how the image is translated um but yeah what what I quite like is that there's this relationship with light the whole way through. Um, mm. So I kind of re rely on light for the exposure of the film. I then rely on light for the exposure onto the plate. So it's it's kind of this, yeah, really nice relationship with with light and, and the world, so. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I think that comes across, you know, you can, you can see very clearly that you've got uh, a knowledge and, um, and are aware of sort of the light and particularly on this image coming through. So tell me about your choice of colour and the overlays mm -hmm. of colour. So you say there's six different and I yeah. mean, I could see very clearly that there's one from each side kind of blending in. Um, but what, 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 how did you choose those colours and what, what was your choice sort of with that? So, so um, this is kind of like another layer to the piece, which is, the idea of a vessel and seeing the cameras as not only an extension of myself, but um, a vessel that light is kind of held and contained. And I've been reading a lot um, recently about kind of the idea of the world being a container within containers and the womb being a container. And in these spaces where things are contained, uh transmutation occurs and the kind of process of growth and transformation and i really found that idea quite fascinating because uh my camera is like a contained dark space in which something enters and a, a kind of process of transformation occurs i also found that within like the sacred spaces and the circle and this kind of enclosed space and then i started thinking about femininity in the womb um and these spaces feel quite prevalent with feminine energy um and photography as a process is something that's kind of been quite male dominated for a number of years so I kind of wanted to put a bit of a different spin on it and so the the choice of color was very much to do with that kind of womb fleshy vessel like space in which these places of transformation occur um yeah so for me it was kind of bringing those feminine energies together and I chose the colors based on that and really wanted to centralize the kind of doll tour the actual circles and then sort of spread spread the ink out so yeah six colors that are all mixed but they kind of blend together quite nicely so yeah I absolutely. can't see the difference too much no really. no not yeah. at all no yeah. No, it's it's a really yeah. No, it's it's a really beautiful piece, and you know, as you're talking about it, I'm picking up on on these aspects, and I hope when people come and see the piece, um, you know, they will they will gauge your sort of um understanding and your theory behind it as well, as well as it being a beautiful a beautiful piece of work. Um, so let's talk a bit. You know, we have awarded you the winner. So what does you know yeah. what's next for for Amber? <laughs> what are you oh, hoping? Um. That might happen next obviously you've got to finish your your masters in the next few months but yeah so but. yeah so at the moment i'm working towards my degree show um which is really exciting that will be at the truman brewery in shoreditch uh in july which people are welcome to come and visit um so at the moment i'm like working solely towards that um but once that's done the world is my oyster so that's what <laughs> yeah. happens. but I'm really keen to keep kind of working in this way working with artists and kind of other galleries um collaborating and just seeing kind of what the future holds yeah absolutely 